Hey, this is Steel Blue and welcome to my home theater. Let's start with the components and gear, then move to the room itself and the build. My screen is a matte white 16 by 9, 1.3 gain, 120 inch elite screen. I didn't go acoustically transparent because I like seeing my speakers. I realized that I am sacrificing some screen size and maybe a cleaner look, but I like seeing everything. It's just cool to me to have my speakers out and visible, just my personal taste. And you'll notice that nothing is hidden. All my equipment is out and visible. I went with a 16 by nine ratio because I watch a lot of varied content and 120 inches is about the max for my space without my side speakers interfering with the picture. My projector is the BenQ HT 3550. It uses a single DLP chip to throw 8.3 million pixels onto the screen for a 4K picture. The picture is surprisingly sharp considering it's able to throw 4K picture through pixel shifting and it's not true native 4K. It puts out 2000 lumens of brightness and covers 95% of the DCI P3 color space and 100% of the Rec. 709. It has a 10 element, eight group, all glass 4K lens array that helps produce an outstanding image. It also has a dynamic iris helping this projector produce impressively deep blacks at this price point. It comes factory calibrated for an optimal picture directly out the box. And in my opinion, this projector is well worth the buy. And at this price point, it's an incredible deal considering its features and overall performance. For my speaker setup, I have a 7.1.4 configuration. That's seven floor level speakers, one sub, and four height or Atmos speakers. My sub is the SVS PB4000. It's one of my favorite components in this theater. I do only have one, but I do plan on getting a second. I ran REW and got a pretty good response with the one at my main seat. The rest of my family doesn't notice much of a difference, so I'm not in much of a hurry to get a second. Um, I do realize that a second would add to that tactile feel and I'll eventually get there, but I've got some other upgrades in mind and the PB is a beast all by itself. My center speaker is the Klipsch RP450C. This speaker is part of their reference premier line. The RP450C has four five and a quarter inch woofers, one one inch titanium tweeter, and it has a sensitivity rating of 97 dB, so it doesn't need a ton of power. Audio comes through crystal clear and clean. My front speakers are the RP8000S, also part of their reference premier line. Each has two eight inch woofers and one one inch titanium tweeter. Really outstanding pair of speakers. These have a frequency response down to 32 Hertz with a sensitivity of 98 dB. So none of the speakers in the reference premier line really need much power. These are huge and they look absolutely beautiful. I, I truly can't say enough about how awesome these speakers sound for both movies and music. My rear speakers are the RP260Fs. These were actually my front left and right speakers until I decided to upgrade to the 8000Fs, which are a larger, newer generation speaker. The 260s have two six and a half inch woofers and one one inch titanium tweeter. Far more speaker than I need for rears, but the setup works. And I raised them up on these DIY stands. My side speakers are the RP160Ms. Each has one six and a half inch woofer and one one inch titanium tweeter. They're sitting on a monoprice universal bookshelf speaker mount. These are really good mounts. I've bumped into them plenty just because I'm me and they're still up. Awesome. I went a different direction with my height speakers. I have four SVS prime elevations. Each has one one inch aluminum dome tweeter and a four and a half inch mid-range driver. When I was building out this room, I initially planned on only two height speakers, but thankfully it struck me just before I started drywalling to wire two more rear height speakers in addition to the two in the front. And I'm really glad I did because playing content that has good Atmos is a fantastic experience and having four speakers versus the two makes the experience even more immersive and satisfying. I did make a pretty silly mistake by not running the speaker wires through the wall. So they end up coming out through the ceiling and I had to hide them in a channel running down the exterior of the wall. So not a huge deal, but if I had taken my time, it would have looked cleaner. I also left the speaker wire connected to each of the Atmos speakers a bit long until I can make a final decision on their placement. My rack stand is the Monolith 4-Tier Audio Stand XL. I like the stand because it's solid and it's an open air design, lots of room for my equipment to breathe, and it looks and feels like a quality stand. 
I stream through a Roku Ultra, the 2020 version. I've been a Roku fan for a while. It's a simple streaming device, produces an excellent picture, and it's snappy enough. I also have a Harmony Elite remote. It can be a bit glitchy at times, but no real complaints. It does what I need it to do. My receiver is the Denon AVR X4500. It can process up to 11 speakers and two subs, but it can only power nine channels. So no issues so far, and it does exactly what I need it to do. I'm cooling the Denon with the AC Infinity Aircom T9. It draws heat out and away from the Denon's internal components. And doing that, it also pulls cooler air into the receiver through the side slots. It works perfect. When the fans are on, however, they are pretty audible, but it doesn't bother me. My Blu-ray player is the Panasonic DP-UB820. It's an excellent player. Power is handled by the Panamax M5300PM. Works fine and does what it should. Provides consistent, clean power, and it protects my equipment. The Outlaw Model 5000 is a 5-channel amp with 120 watts per channel. I use it to power my height speakers, more power than I need for those channels, but I'm happy to have the headroom. The Monoprice 7-channel amp is 200 watts per channel. It powers all of my lower-level speakers, which are all Klipsch. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't need a ton of power for those speakers, but again, I'm happy having the extra headroom and knowing I have plenty of power on reserve to handle whatever I can throw at. So I do need to work a bit on my cable management. It's a bit rough at the moment, but I am using MediaBridge 12 gauge speaker wire between my speakers and amplifiers. Also using MediaBridge banana plugs as my connectors. The SVS SoundPath audio interconnects connect my amps to the receiver. And for all of my HDMI cables, I'm using the Rio Pro 8K fiber optic cable. Um, the HDMI from my projector to my receiver is about 33 feet. Um, I did go with the 8K cable, even though I have no 8K content, nor is any of my other gear 8K compatible. Uh, but I figured with the headroom, I shouldn't have a problem with 4K information passing through. And I'm happy to say that the Rio Pro fiber cables work perfect, not a problem. This movie shelf was a DIY project. I actually really like DIY projects and this was a simple one. The only issue is that I should have made an extra shelf or two. It's getting just a bit full. Um, I don't have a ton of physical media, but I have and continue to collect uh, my favorite movies. Occasionally I'll buy movies that I've never seen before and um, I'll have a movie premiere night with my family. I also have some that are more nostalgia because I enjoyed them when I was younger. Um, and I'll also buy some that may not be the best movie, but allows me to show the potential of my theater, whether that's audio or video quality. Um, haven't seen every movie that's on the shelf here in my theater yet. Um, but so far, the best movie I've seen down here is Godzilla King of Monsters. And just to clarify, I'm not saying this is the best movie I've ever seen, but it is the best movie I've seen in my home theater. It's the best experience I've had down here. So um, I love the audio on this. The standout is definitely the LFE and visually it looks really good. A very close second is Blade Runner 2049. Visually, visually super clean and excellent audio. As far as seating, the front row is the Valencia Tuscany Love Seat. The back row seats are the Seatcraft Diamante. They look very similar, but there are some differences. The Valencia seats have a softer, smoother feel. The Seacraft feels much more firm and tight. The Valencia also has an adjustable lumbar function. They both have mo motorized reclining functions, blue LED lights at the bottom and around the cup holder, and adjustable headrest, diamond stitching, and a storage compartment under the armrest. Um, I really love the seats. They look great, super comfortable. Um, during football season, American football for our international folks, um, there are some days where I spend the day down here and um, I, I can comfortably sit in these seats for hours. The riser was another DIY. I really had to have it because my room just isn't that wide. The riser is eight feet long by seven feet wide by 10 inches high. And to figure out the height of the riser, um, so that the back row could see over the front row, I sat in the chair and stacked some books on top until I could see over the top of the front row. And then from there, I was able to measure out how high I needed the riser to be. 
I used 10 by 12 foot boards for the frame and I cut them to fit my eight by seven foot design. There is a roughly 12 inch space between each of the studs and the spacing is stuffed with rock wool insulation. I stapled furniture backing fabric on the bottom to keep the insulation in and I screwed in two layers of 23 by 32 OSB subfloor. I used construction adhesive between the first layer of OSB in the frame and more adhesive between the two layers of OSB. I wanted to be confident that the riser would support the weight of the seat and my family. I also didn't want it to act as a drum, so it's pretty solid. It doesn't move an inch and there's zero squeaks. Um, it's crazy heavy, but it's movable if I decide to change things in the room. I actually did the carpeting on this myself, which was a pain. And to be honest, not my best DIY uh, job, but um, it's not too bad. And from a distance, it looks pretty good. For my acoustic treatment, I have some DIY acoustic panels. Um, I'm convinced this is one of the most meaningful and cost-effective ways to improve sound in my room. Before I set up these acoustic panels, I thought it sounded great down here, but I could definitely detect some echo that muddied the sound just a bit. Um, initially, I made just two panels and placed them at the uh, reflection points in the front, right, and left. Uh, the two panels alone cleaned up some of the muddy muddiness I was hearing. Um, and while I knew that panels should improve the sound in my room, I was still very surprised by how much it actually impacted sound. It's, it's such a simple, inexpensive way to improve the quality of sound in my space. Now I'm just a huge advocate of uh, acoustic treatment. Um, I have them in various places that I believe make sense, including some of the taller uh, corner panels. I'm also trying to be mindful not to over-treat and deaden the room. Uh, so I'm still experimenting with placement, and at some point I want to experiment with some diffuser pan, uh, diffusion panels uh, in addition to absorption. As for the room itself, uh, it measures 12 feet wide, 29 feet long, and just about 9 feet high. Uh, it is in the basement. The front and left walls are concrete with nothing but earth on the other side. The right wall here is an interior wall with our family room on the other side and the rear wall is the only exterior wall. Uh, on the other side is our backyard, and that backs up to our neighbor's backyard. And both of us are fortunate enough to have rather large backyards, so there's a ton of space separating us. So I'm not too concerned about tr sound transfer from the outside in or the inside out. Um, there is one window in this room. I sealed it with what is essentially a thick, oversized acoustic panel. It blocks any light from the outside and it helps dampen any sound from either direction. Short of framing it in, this was really my, my next best option and it works. Um, when I bought the house, it had an unfinished basement. So I was fortunate enough to build it out uh, from the bare studs. I really had the opportunity to build it out however I pleased. Um, this was my first home theater and first build of this scope. The entire room is almost entirely DIY. Uh, the only thing I didn't do entirely was the electrical carpeting and AC. Everything else was me by myself doing the work during COVID. Uh, and it was tough. Um, I had to get over a learning curve because I had never done any of this before. Uh, it took me a lot longer than what it should have. And it was extremely frustrating at times, but really, uh, the trade-off was worth it. I saved a ton and I got to use it elsewhere in this room. Um, but really, most importantly, I appreciate this room even more having built it out myself. Um, the drywall, it's the Gold Bond 5 8 inch Purple XP. Uh, behind it, in between the studs and through the joist is rock wool insulation. Uh, this helped reduce the transfer of sound from this room to the rest of the house. But really, no matter what I did, the base from the PB4000, it travels. I knew it was no way to avoid that. Um, those high and mids are largely contained, but the lower frequencies, they can be heard two floors up. Uh, fortunately, my sweet wife doesn't mind it during the day, but at night, I obviously I have to nail it, um, dial it back. Um, the entrance here is, um, was initially much larger. I ended up framing it in and installing a heavy solid core door. Um, I ordered just a heavy door slab and I DIY'd it. 
uh, drilled the doorknob holes, the hinges, and installed all the hardware. Um, I really got exactly what I wanted. The door's perfect. The only small issue I had was the height of the door. Uh, when I ordered my carpet, I opted for a thicker underlay and I didn't account for that properly in my measurement. So I had to shave the door down a smidge. It made me a little nervous because I had to take a circular saw to my um, brand new expensive door, but it actually worked. And uh, thankfully there's pretty good instructional videos on YouTube. Um, now the door is pretty tight at the top and bottom, which is what I wanted. And uh, I added some stripping along the edges to create a nice tight seal. The carpet is one of my favorite features in this room. The underlay is incredibly soft and thick. And the carpet itself is a charcoal color and complements the darker color scheme of the room. The walls and ceiling are Sherwin-Williams Tricorn Black. It's their emerald line. It's a bit pricey, but really a great paint and I think worth the splurge. Uh, it looks great. Initially, I planned to only paint the ceiling, front and rear walls with the Tricorn Black. The side walls were going to be gray and it took me forever to decide on the gray that I wanted. So. After I painted the ceiling, front and rear walls with the tricorn black, I started a section with the gray that I had chosen and I didn't like it at all. So long story short, I ran back to the store, got more tricorn black and finished the entire room in black. Um, and really one of the best decisions I made in this room. So one of the worst features of this room and one of my biggest regrets is the soffit. So, the AC was the first thing that I had installed uh, when building out this room and really completing the entire basement. Um, and to their credit, the installer did ask me for my input, but um, this was my first major home project. I didn't know anything about anything. I was just excited to get started. I wanted whatever to be done to be up to my county code. And so I relied on the expertise of the AC company for what was best. Uh, looking back and now having more knowledge, I should have told them not to run the duct work in this room, but rather the go through the family room so the soffit would be on that side and coming through the joist to get to the rear vent in here. But um, I ended up having to frame the soffit around the duct. Um, in the front, I also had to frame around some utilities. Fortunately, they're not that distracting at all. Um, when I'm down here, I don't notice them. Um, I'm sure the paint has a lot to do with it being black. It all seems to kind of fade into each other. Um, and the AC down here is a, on its own system. It serves only the basement, so sound won't travel to any of the other floors and um, via the ducts. While I tried to do as much DIY as possible, I didn't dare attempt electrical myself. I had an electrician wire the room and install a 20 amp circuit for my rack and a 15 amp circuit for all the other outlets and um, hook up the lights on their own circuit as well. When he left, I did have to replace the receptacles. It didn't strike me until a week after he left that the receptacles he installed were all white. So I replaced them all myself with uh, black receptacles. After seeing the electrician work and asking him questions directly, I'm actually pretty confident in doing electrical myself moving forward as long as the walls are open. And my local code is pretty straightforward. So if I ha ever have to do it again, I definitely do it myself. The lights are pretty cool. They have a night light function. Honestly, I never use it. The lights are dimmable, but they're usually on 100% or they're completely off. And they did originally have a white trim, but I spray painted them matte black to complement the rest of the room. My home theater isn't perfect. Even though I was able to build it out from an unfinished space, there's still things I would have done differently. This being my first home theater and first home build of this scope, there's so much I didn't know that I didn't know, despite all my prep and research. But my home theater is really my happy place. It's so comfortable. It's so much fun. This room is truly a dream come true. And I do have lots of upgrades in mind that I'll definitely share as I get closer to getting them. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try to reply. And I would appreciate a like. Um, I do plan to post a whole lot more content, so please subscribe.